Jennifer Lane here with Jello Lane Designs. Today's project is this cute little box. We are going to create the, the scallops on this lid with the envelope punch board. This is the fifth project in my envelope punch board series. Um, some things to note is this cute cotton paper that we are going to use to make this little flower. And the sentiment uh, this is an old thank you that I had, and I'm going to use a new celebration stamp just to show you a little versatility. I think the stamp I'm going to use is, is to the birthday effect. Um, as you'll see, you can put lots of goodies or a necklace, jewelry, anything really inside the box. It's a pretty good size. So let's get started. Here are those supplies that you need to make this project. And first we'll start out with making the box. I'll put these to the side. <clears throat> to make the bottom of the box, this is five by seven and it's scored at one and nine sixteenths. So what you're going to do is just score all those score lines. And then you'll cut up on each side. I just minor the corners on one side a little bit just to kind of, it's a little more forgiving that way. And the boxes tend to fit together a tiny bit nicer. I would recommend that you use tear and tape, uh, fast fuse, something that's a little bit stronger. Just for time's sake, I'm going to use some snail and adhesive is going to go on all these little squares, the ends that you minored. And then you're just going to basically line it up with the top. And there you have your boxes complete and we'll set that aside. Next we'll work on the top. This piece is four by six and you're going to score it one inch all the way around. Um, I will have all the dimensions and the scoring and all the supplies that I use in the description box. So if you need to refer back to them, you have them available. This piece is what we're going to use the envelope punch board on. <clears throat> Um, I'm not sure why I took that out because you won't be needing that piece. We're not going to be doing any scoring. All we're going to be doing is punching. So you're going to line it up at the one inch punch. <clears throat> then you're going to flip it over and you're going to line it up at the one again and punch. Then you're going to flip it back on its right side. Line it up, punch. Then flip it again. Line it up at one, punch, and then we're going to turn it this way. Line it up at one, punch, flip it, line it up at one, punch, flip it back on its side, line it up at one, punch, flip one last time, line it up at one, and punch. So then your piece kind of looks like that. And that's why you have it with the envelope punch board. Let me move that out of the way. Get these pieces. And then for this piece, what we'll do is we'll score first. Remember you scored all the way around at one. So just burnish your sides. And then you will want to cut, I'm not sure what side is easier to see. 
and then flip it and then cut up to the score line on each of these sides. So now what you have is something that looks like this. What we are going to do is we are going to trim a little bit of this, of each of these corners. Um, I like to make little squares like that because what will happen is sometimes if you didn't line your punch up correctly, you get this overhang here and you don't really want to see that. So with this piece here, you don't see any of that overhang on your little scallop. So again, I just like to trim these pieces right into squares. So if you're looking at it like this, what you can do is just cut up and then cut across here. And there you have your little piece. And we'll do this last one. So cut across and cut across. And then those little tiny squares that we created is where your adhesive would go. And again, I would recommend fast fuse uh, sticky strip, something to that effect. I'm going to use snail just to kind of move the video along so it doesn't take a lot of time. And you're just going to line them up. Like that. And there you have your top of your, your box. Um, I have found that Sometimes it's a very tight fit, and that's good. That's what you kind of want, um, just so it doesn't fall off. Okay, so next we will move on to the flower, and I'll show you what I used here to create that. Uh, this is cotton paper, and Stampin' Up! came out with it, and the launch of the new catalog so it's been out for a while and what I did is I created five layers so I cut out five um, of these framelits the floral framelits and I used the second largest flower in that framelit collection and like I said I used five of those for the leaves you can freehand it um, this is cucumber crush and this is cotton paper as well. It comes several different colors. I think there's like four different colors that you get in the whole pack. Um, but like I said, you can freehand these. These particular leaves I cut out with the bouquet bigs die. Um, I'm not sure. I think it might be retired. But um, you can use any kind of leaf that works for you. <clears throat> okay, so what I did, it's not important that they're lined up exactly correct. Um, they can be a little off. That's fine. I have my mini stapler and you're just going to go in the middle and staple all five of those layers together. And then what all you're going to do is just crinkle the paper one layer at a time. Just kind of crinkling and folding it on top of the next layer and the next layer and the next layer and the next layer. And there you have your nice little flower. This is great paper because it allows you to just kind of maneuver it where you want it to be and then once you get your flower the way that you would like it I used a stamp and dimensional right on the back and I just attach that directly to the front of your box Say my flowers look a little sad. 
but just keep playing with it until you get it how you would like it and it it will it will stay there that's that's looking much better and then we're just going to attach the leaves I used many glue dots for that so here I just attached a mini glue dot right to the end and then you can just play around and once you kind of have it where you want you can lift that right up and just stick it right on there so next we'll move on to the banner and then we're finished like I said this is a quick easy project for the sentiment, I am going to use um, Hello, a sentiment from Hello from this current celebrations, which ends very soon. So if you're in love with any of the celebration items, you might want to think about uh, placing an order so you can earn those free. We have until March 31st. I am using uh, Watermelon Wonder. Let me just ink up. This white piece measures uh, four and three fourths by thirteen sixteenths. Let me see if I can do this. And so it says, "My friend." I think I might flip it over and try it one more time. a little better and then this um, I think this is Cajun Cruise Cajun I I'll look this up because I'm not 100% sure what color that is looks a little bit too bright to be Dijon delightful Dijon so I just layered that on my banner piece and that yellow piece was three and a half by 15 sixteenths and I just trimmed off the excess there and I'll just attach a tiny bit of snail so what we're going to do is come right here and I'm going to cut off it's a little too long for my liking still even after cutting it so I am going to just attach that like so and you can um, put a stamp and dimensional underneath the banner and then just attach that so there is your box. That is the project. Um, like I said, it's number five in the series. Um, come back next week. There will be one more project that we will feature with the envelope punch board. Um, and always, if you need to get a hold of me, you can reach me. My email is jillalane71 at gmail.com or my Facebook page, Jello Lane Designs.